Greetings wonderful people, my name is Iwan, and what you see on the screen is the result of the first 5 days of working on Plastris. Basically, these are just the bare bones of the project. This is the first part out of 4 weekly videos in which I'll share the process of developing this simple puzzle game. The goal of Plastris is to fill the entire grid with objects. Nothing too fancy, but the trick is that you use the perimeter of one shape to play things into cells and another one to remove them. It's possibly the first time in my life when I decided to make something extremely relaxing and peaceful after years of developing pretty hard and sometimes cruel games. I started this project by making polished tiles, which is a curse I cannot dispel. It's extremely dumb because, as always, I didn't even end up using this art, and what is worse, I didn't even have time to make any variations to the tiles. Next, I tested if the tile size was good enough. I made sure that the main game objects were distinct and clearly visible in the biggest possible grid size. After that, I added the main mechanics into the game, placing and removing objects. It of course didn't work out for multiple selections and I had to tweak the code. This issue was fixed soon and at this point the game was basically complete, everything that is left for me to do is just polishing this stuff. Immediately after implementing the first level, I added the system that randomizes tiles on the area. Why? Well, isn't that the first thing that you should do in every project? And an issue I still haven't fixed is automatic tile placement. I didn't have time to look into it, so it places a bit too many. But hey, more is not less, am I right? Later I added one last main feature, overlapping shapes. In other words, these dash symbols allow you both to place and to remove objects from the cells. The next step was adding particles, which were my first step to being smart and designing with trash art before making it look better, and that's something I'm really proud of. Last step of this week was adding placeholder SFX and an awesome work in progress soundtrack by Hypersleep, which in my opinion really started to bring the game to life. This game idea was stuck in my head for a while now, but I haven't ever really sat down to work on it, and that's why I consider this week to be the first. The Make a Game in 4 Weeks series will last approximately 5 weeks of real time, which is 7 days longer than 4 weeks just in case something strange happens. And it always does. The planned release date is the 3rd of March, and I really hope I will manage to finish the game by that time. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing at least just to see how this experiment turns out in the end. And I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.